Hi, everybody. Thanks to be here for this talk. I'm Nicola Frankel. I've been a developer for like 17 years. And a couple of years ago, I've decided to become a developer advocate. The reason I propose this talk is, um, well, there are so many ways to access Kubernetes pods that I also wanted to understand. And when I try to understand something in general, I dig a little uh, deeper and then I try to transmit what I learned. This is a back to basics talk. I'm, I won't talk about like deep networking stuff, no IP tables, no nothing. I want to tell about stuff that actually you can use in your day to day life. If you were expecting all the nitty gritty details, uh, yeah, just leave now because you will be super disappointed. Um, so I assume that everybody is using Kubernetes and that you probably know how what, what a pod is. Um, just I think most people think about a pod as being like a container. A pod can contain multiple containers. Just in this talk, it's not necessary, but the mapping one-to-one -one is not really right. I will try to uh, demo everything, what I, I'm telling you. Um, so I've created a Kubernetes cluster. I always avoid using like cloud stuff because it can be like pretty, oh, you don't see anything, that's interesting. And I need to switch very, very like fast. Ah, I switch too fast. And display settings, and then I want mirroring. And I cannot use it, that's really fine. Help! And how did you solve it? If you jump out of the presentation, then you can like swipe the screen. So I had to stop the presentation and go back in again. Yeah, um, okay. Let's try it. Perfect. Uh, okay, mirror. Amazing, thanks a lot. You earn chocolate. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Swiss chocolate. Okay, perfect, thanks. Anyway, so now I have it. So what I already did is I created a kind cluster, then I uploaded um, the image I will use throughout this presentation. And then if I get the nodes, so I also aliased kubectl2k because I'm like super lazy. So we can see the control plane and the two nodes. That's, that will be my, my starting points. And so the next step is actually to, woohoo, like crazily amazing stuff. No, I already went through this. Deploy a pod. I guess that everybody knows how to do it. I will do it through a deployment. Yeah, I have my script. I'm sorry, this is supposed to be live coding, but well, at some point I don't want to waste your time. And then I get the pods and I can watch the pods being deployed and they are already deployed, that's cool. I've deployed one pod, hoo -hoo, that's amazing. At this point, the question is, well, what's the IP of this pod? So we can ask about its IP. So here, uh, everybody sees it or I should make it a bit bigger? A bit bigger. Let's do it a bit bigger. Yeah, you're welcome. So here I'm getting its IP and amazing, I've got the IP. So if I try to ping the IP, of course, as you can imagine, it won't work because it's an internal IP. We can also ask so here what we did is we uh, got like through Kubernetes to get the IP, but we can also ask the pod itself to get its own IP through the host name. So we can like go on the pod and ask, hey, host name. Now, of course, we've got the same IP. That's normal. Still, we cannot access it. The thing is, it's an internal IP and it's an accessible outside the cluster. So the next step 
is to realize that the internal IPs, they are not stable. So even if we found a way to get those IPs, we cannot get them. So let's try a little experiment. Let's kill the pods and create a new one. Not us, but since it's a deployment, so I didn't like uh, get deployment. So there is a deployment. So the pod is attached to the deployment. We can kill the pod. So this pod, we can kill it and we can like, we can Kubernetes will create a new one. And now presto, we've got a new, a new pod running. And the fun part at this point is it has a different IP. So before the IP was 1.2 and now the IP is 2.2. So even if we got hold of its IP, then it's not really interesting because, well, pods will come and go. As you know, like pods, they are ephemeral. If there is a resource contention, if they are not responding, whatever, Kubernetes kills them. And if they are attached to a deployment or uh, um, a, a set, then it will respond new ones, but with different IPs. So the next step is actually to create a service. The service is the way to access a stable interface over pods. So the idea is then you have a stable IP, then you can do whatever you want with it. If a pod goes and it's replaced, and it's part of a deployment, whatever, then the service still points to it. So the mapping logic between like a stable interface and a pod, you don't need to write it yourself. Kubernetes handles it. Let's do that. I will expose it through a service and I will use a cluster IP. So now if, I have my script, I should follow those scripts, otherwise I will get lost. I need to make it a big thing. Okay, and now I have my cluster IP. So here, this URL is stable. If I kill the pod, I can still access the pod through this URL. Guess what? This URL is still internal. So if I try to ping this IP, it still doesn't work. Also here I'm using a Mac, <laughs> which means that even if everything run as expected, I have uh, like an additional abstraction layer between the cluster and myself. With like probably on, la on Linux you would have less problem. Okay, so now I have my service. What should I do is do a not port. So finally, at this point, we can access it through a not port. So this is this stuff. We make a request to any node. That's the point. And then we will be able to get through the service, which has an external IP, and the service will point to the pod. So how do we do it? I will delete everything. And I will now go and go to the not port. And I have created a deployment for that because now it will be easier not to go through the command line but to like use a dedicated manifest. So I have a deployment, which is exactly what I did before with one end. Oh yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Don't apologize, that's good feedback. Um, again, good enough, great, big enough. Okay, perfect. Um, so that's exactly what I did before. I have a deployment with one replica. It's the same Nginx image. The only thing what I, I'll be adding is like a configuration so that the configuration tells its uh, host name and server address. And then I have this service and now it's not a cluster IP, it's not port. 
So service node ports is the most basic brick in how you can access uh, a pod through Kubernetes. So let's apply it. Okay, apply F deployment. Okay, get pods. Wow, it's super fast. Okay, magnificent. Now we can get the services. And here I have the node port. Fun port, as I mentioned, I have like um, a layer between like the cluster and my OS. So I, as I created kinds in the first place, I had to be a bit smart and I had to actually like export the port from my container port to the host ports. If you are using like a standard Linux distribution, it shouldn't happen. So now I can finally curl local hosts 3800 and I access my pods. Amazing. I feel you are not amazed. <laughs> we finally got to the pod. Well, that's nice and good, but let's like deploy. Ah. Let's deploy a new pod. So we will just increase the size of our deployment just to see what happens when we've got two pods. Because the Kubernetes semantics is not that great in some regards. Um, I will directly do this. Thanks. I think after 50 minutes, I will get it right. Um, okay, so now I have my two pods running and we can try to do a couple of requests. And as you can see, if we repeatedly curl then I have load balancing between my two pods. Which is funny because the next object I will talk a bit about is called load balancer. So you don't need the load balancer to do load balancing. Fun port. So that's a for me, that's a very strange object because actually, as I mentioned, you don't need it to low load balancing. I think the name is really badly chosen, but it's, you, you use the load balancer object when, at least at the time when you needed to do additional stuff. And in general, you use it on cloud providers. So it's just an empty object. You use your load balancer object on the cloud provider. It provides whatever service you want and perfect. Um, fun part, I, you cannot obviously use it like bare metal, but there is um, like an implementation called Metal LB that's supposed to work. And because of my Mac or my poor networking skills, I couldn't make it work. So I, I won't demo anything. Just know that there is this load balancer object that you can use when you are going to cloud providers, but you don't need them to do load balancing, obviously. Um, historically, getaways, because we are talking about like some like first load balancing and then routing, that's exactly the idea of, of um, API getaways. Like at the beginning, where, and before the internet, first we had load balancing and then we had routing. So load balancing is between like nodes of the same type and routing is between nodes of different types. So here is another brick where we evolve and now we say, hey, we want some routing. So we want to route some requests to some pods and some other requests to some other pods. And here is again um, an object that is an abstraction and you have many, 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 many different implementation. So load balancing, you don't need the load balancer object, but for routing, you need the ingress object or something else that I will show you afterwards. 
At this point, as I mentioned, it's an abstraction and you've got different implementation. Here I've mentioned a few that are like you can use. Just a few words. I work on the Apache API 6 project. So basically it's an API gateway. It's an Apache project. It's managed by the Apache Foundation. It's built on a very simple architecture. So everything is open source. Uh, here. Yes, here. Um, it's built on Nginx, OpenResty, and then you've got a couple of uh, out of the box uh, Lua plugins. You can write your own. So this is a bit different. You need to do need to do routing. You need ingress. So at this point, it becomes much much more complex. I will have two pods, one called left, one called right. Here, I only like show you the left part, but because otherwise it would be too complicated. But basically, it would be the same. You will like enter the nodes. The nodes will direct you to the API getaway, in, here in this case, the API 6 getaway. Then it will direct you to the right Pods, then you will go to the right service, and again, you will go to the left pod. So you will have the service and the pod of your ingress, plus the service and the pod of your own like software. Let's see how it works. Any question, feel free to ask. So I delete everything. I don't need them anymore. I will advance a bit further. And now I have additional objects. I have, sorry, up. I will install API 6. So here are the values that I will need. Again, at this point, this is like proprietary stuff. Every ingress has their own stuff. Here I will be using APS6. If you use another um, ingress, you will need another one. Eng en Nginx as one, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I will helm install it because I'm like lazy. And this is the fun port. We need to wait a bit because it takes some time. Perfect. We can uh, get, ah, again, I will follow the script, less issues. So let's see the services in all namespaces. It's too big. But you see that I've created a new namespace, an Ingress API 6 namespace. Then you've got the uh, like getaway itself. So basically it's Apache API 6. Apache API 6 relies on like a couple of, um, on the storage. So it, there must be a couple of nodes. ETCD is the one that is used. So ETCD is the same uh, key storage value as um, Kubernetes uses. And then you've got the ingress controller. The ingress controller is meant to like reconcile what you want with the reality or the other way around. So basically you say what you want and API 6 ingress controller will check the state, will say, oh, that's not what you want. And then we'll issue the, or the commands to make what you want. At this point, normally, um, yes, of course, and it's ingress API 6. So we, we, I need to wait a bit. I hope it's working, but as you can see here, etcd is not working yet. So we need to wait until etcd is initialized. It has three pods because three is the magical number. There should always be a number of I always miss between even and odd in English, uh, but one, three, five, whatever. And one is not enough because if it dies, well, pff, it's not very safe. So three is the new magic number. Uh, I hope it works now. No. That's the fun part of demos. If So let's see. Uh, K describe pod. Oops. Uh, K logs. Nope. Ah, yeah, of course. Uh, 
Uh oh. Container API 16 pod is waiting to start pod initializing. So I hope that. So here we can see that etcd is not starting, which is not super great for the rest of my demos. And. Uh, Uh, you want to play with fire, you get burned, of course. Okay, get logs. Uh, namespace, ingress API 6. Okay. Ah! It just takes a bit of time until all etcd nodes uh, pods have started, then they say, see, see each other, then they create the cluster. Um, meanwhile, perhaps I have some questions, otherwise it will be like super stupid to just wait. What do I want to tell you next? Nothing. Ah, yeah, I can tell you that. So once I've created the ingress, I need to create the routes. The problem is the routes are not objects. So the routes are actually parts of the ingress itself or they are like dedicated objects of a dif different type. So there are two ways to create ingresses. The first is like below the ingress object, which I find here. Nope. Where do I find it? Yeah, sorry, I didn't create it this way. I created it this way. Or the other way is to use, in that case, the um, property stuff, which is API 6 root under its uh, dedicated namespace. And if you need to migrate from, uh, from, to another uh, provider, you will need to change everything. So, that's the idea behind the next subject that I want to show you. But before, I just want to make sure that it works. Yes, ingress controller has started. Uh, API 6 has started. So now I think that everything, everything is working. Yes. So now I can apply my deployment. K apply F deployment. Okay. And normally, get parts. I have one left pod. One right pod. Let's curl each in turn, which again, I should follow the script. So if I curl at the root, the route has not been defined. So of course, it, API 6 itself tells me, hey, no route defined. But if I use left, then it directs me to the left. And if I use right, it directs me to the right which is exactly what I wanted. Um, there is a slight bug at the moment that I found when I was preparing. So API 6 route is, is an object itself. There we can see something. Um, the, 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 the bug is here, the URI is only slash left. I, I, I want to see slash right and slash left. I, I see only slash left, so it might be slightly misleading. Um, we can check the configuration itself. Configuration is correct, we have both. Um, actually, what my uh, colleague told me, I asked the developer, he told me, hey, like at the moment, the Kubernetes API is, is lacking something. We, we, we need to wait so it's not on our port. Just be careful when you uh, ask for some information. Sometimes it doesn't exactly translate to the reality, so just make sure you have the right query at hand. So as I mentioned, the routes, either they are like under uh, the ingress object or they are proprietary objects, so we, we can do better. Um, and that's the point of the new kid on the block, which is the API, uh, getaway API. So with the getaway API, um, the CNCF tries, or the Kubernetes uh, people try to actually make like a clean separation between uh, the object abstraction and their implementation. So we can have like proper routes that are like abstractions for everybody and then we have implementation and migration should be like easier. Also, 
routing, uh, as I've shown you, is basi basically like for path prefix with the ingress. But you might want to do routing based on something else, for example, header. And that's not possible actually with the abstraction. It might be possible with the implementation, but again, it's proprietary. So we, we want this kind of stuff. So now let's install the ingress object. And let's remove everything. So the routes and the API 6 routes. And let's uninstall the charts. And now I want to use the getaway API. Okay, so now I've got a new thing. I will, um, I will first deploy, sorry, I will first install the CRDs. So I have like standard CRDs for ingress that are part of the Kubernetes distribution. At the moment, the Gateway API is experimental, so I need to install those objects explicitly. And you, you can see those are like Kubernetes experimental objects. They are not proprietary. Then I will install API 6 to serve as the Gateway API. Then I can explain everything because it will take some time like before. So now what I'm doing is I will say, hey, enable gateway API equals true. So that's pretty nice. And then the gateway itself, as you can see, uses like for the moment experimental namespace, but part of Kubernetes soon there will be like not experimental anymore. We first defined what gateway we shall be using. So that's the role of the gateway class. We rely on the controller name. So that's what we are deploying right now. And then at this point we say, so this is once per cluster. So you defined this once per cluster. The, I didn't show it, but for ingress, you can do the exact same stuff. Now I will create a gateway object instance here. I will create the API 6 getaway and it references this one. So basically you say, hey, I will create this object getaway and it will use this implementation. At this point, you can create routes. And again, those routes are under like a standard namespace that, are nothing, that has nothing to do with Apache API 6. And then I have the exact same stuff that I defined before, like I have one HTTP route for left, one HTTP route for right. Exact same stuff. Perhaps now I can check if it worked. So kget pods, uh, all namespace. Ingress API 6 would be better. Yep, uh, it's still one is missing, but it should be good. So now I can apply my pods, okay, apply F deployment and my routes and everything. So K okay, get HTTP routes. Yeah, of course. I will follow the script. Script is always better to follow. Okay. And I will curl that. So I'm a bit too fast, perhaps. Ah, pod initializing again. Sorry for that. Okay, now perhaps it should be good. I will apply again, just to be sure. And too fast. What is not working? Get pods, okay. Okay, get pods, namespace, ingress API 6. This is working, this is running. K logs. Uh, 
Uh, it might be the case. Everything is possible. So I deployed the deployment. Hey, I forgot the gateway. Who said that? Thanks a lot. I forgot to apply the gateway. Thanks. Ah. Much better. <laughs> of course, it's much, much better this way. Um, well, let's see if it's much, much better. Yes, it's much, much better. <laughs> Come afterwards. You also get chocolate. Um, so again, it's the exact same result. At the roots, we define nothing, so right now found. We define the left, it goes to the left. We define the right, it goes to the right. But it's not only that. As I mentioned, we can do much better. So now, instead of like having the pass prefix, we would try to do something that's not uh, possible with um, uh, the ingress, which is actually like dispatching on the header. So let's apply it. Okay, apply f get away. And now we have changed the header so that if we curl the roots, so here I'm saying, hey, like go to the left, sorry, uh, goes to the right, but if you have a match with a header two with value left, goes to left. So let's try it. Curl local host. Ah. Okay, but then if we pass the header with, as I mentioned, value two left, then it goes to the left. That's not possible with the ingress at the moment. Well, with the ingress abstraction, again, in the implementation, it depends. And I think that's the end. So thanks for your... Uh, Attention, you can uh, follow me on Twitter if you are interested about the blog post behind it. There is something and I forgot to add the GitHub uh, URL. So I will do it just afterwards. I will uh, upload my slides, but I can do it right now. Um, uh, config. And it's this one. Kate's access. Done. So if you're interested to uh, like redo the same step as I, everything will be on this GitHub repo. So you've got uh, the first article about access Kubernetes pods. Then I have another article about <coughs> Getaway API, and then you have everything in the same repo. Is there any question? If there are questions, you need to step up in front of the mic, which can be very intimidating, I know, but don't worry, everything will be fine. I'm always afraid when I have no questions because either it was a really, really bad talk you don't want to like shame me in public or it was very good talk and nobody has any questions, so I never know. Of course, I would prefer to be the second, but... Uh, no question, really. So I hope it's the second. I have some stickers, so uh, come to me, I will give the stickers and for the gentleman in the back and my friend here, you can come for the Swiss chocolate. Thanks a lot.